Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of object oriented programming. In this video lecture we will be discussing about interaction diagram, another diagram that comes under UML, Unified Modeling Language. So far we have discussed class diagrams, use case diagrams. Now we will see what is an interaction diagram is. From the name itself, it is clear that this diagram is going to represent the interactions. How the interaction between different objects takes place. How different objects passes messages between each other. That is what this diagram is going to model. And when we talk about interaction diagrams, there are two types of diagrams that we have to consider. They are sequence diagrams and collaboration diagrams. And the speciality of these diagrams are if we know one among these two, we can derive the other. For example, if we know the sequence diagram, then from that diagram we can draw the collaboration diagram and vice versa. So first we will see what is a sequence diagram is. Sequence diagram shows the interaction among objects and we will be showing the interaction in terms of two-dimensional chart okay so when we draw this sequence diagram we have to read this diagram from top to bottom okay that's very important and we will be representing the objects that are participating in the interaction at the top of this chart and we will be representing objects in boxes when we draw the box we have to write the class name as well as the object name and how do we separate the class name and object name we have to separate it by using a colon operator in example and then we will discuss the remaining things this is an example for sequence diagram for the renew book use case so all, all must remember one point that each sequence diagram sequence diagram is actually an interaction diagram so each interaction diagram will be showing a single behavior of a single use case Okay, or in other ways we can say it will be highlighting only single use case so this sequence diagram indicates the uh, behavior of the use case named renew book and we have to read this sequence diagram from top to bottom and as you can see these are the object names that are included in this interaction and see here in this example we have not mentioned the class name See if there was class name that name must be before this colon as you can see in each of these boxes there is a colon operator the class names must appear before on the left hand side of the colon operator so here library boundary library book renewal controller library book register book library member all these are objects because it is coming after the colon or right side of the colon so these are objects so as we can see all the objects in this diagram are existing at the top of the chart that means these objects exist even before this interaction takes place so sequence diagram is actually representing an interaction and in this sequence diagram all these objects are located at the top of the chart that is above all the vertical dashed, line, dashed lines that means all these objects exist even before this interaction took place that means if there are some objects that uh, that comes to or that becomes alive in between the interaction then those objects must be shown in between this vertical line somewhere here or somewhere here if that object if any one object is become is becoming alive at this point of time then this square bracket this square box should be appearing here not at the top i hope you understood so if you are getting a sequence diagram and if you are seeing all the square boxes above or at the top of the diagram itself that means all those objects exist even before the interaction took place and you can see that dashed lines that is drawn vertically downwards from each of the object that represents the lifetime of the object how long the object 
exist in the program that is what we mean by these vertical lines you can see from all objects there are vertical dashed lines going downward even within this dashed lines you can see one rectangular shape here that means from this moment till this moment this object is alive even though the lifetime of this object is from here till here among this lifetime in this interaction this object is alive from this point till this point alive means active it is active so it depends upon each object when all these objects will be active as you can see here this object library member is active from here to here and then it is not inactive and I think again it became active at this point of time and it became inactive after this point of time so that is what we represent by this rectangular shape and how they interact these are known as the interaction lines and as you can see the label that is coming above the line that is a message that is being passed between the objects so these are the messages and these are the interaction that takes place so in this case this interaction is between library book renewal controller and library member as you can see the arrow the line is going starting from here and it is reaching here and we have the message that is being passed so we have to read in the, in case of sequence diagram we have to read the messages from top to bottom not randomly we cannot randomly pick any message this interaction takes place in such a way that it is happening from the top to bottom the first message is this renew book and it is between library boundary and library book renewal controller then the renewal book controller sent uh, the message find member borrowing to the library member object that is after that this library book renewal control object uh, sent a message back to library boundary that is display borrowing so we have to start from the first message of the diagram and we have to go towards the bottom one by one that is how we have to read this sequence diagram so all these slides explains each terms and each line inside the figure that we have seen just now you can just go through these sentences all of these things are i have explained just now what is a rectangle symbol what is the vertical dash line how what is the object box represents etc then what's the message how it is indicated etc and how the messages are shown it is in the chronological order that is the order in which it occurs so all those things i have explained you can just uh, go back to that uh, figure and just here to those explanation once again so that it is very clear to you now we will see the second type of interaction diagram which is the collaboration diagram okay so in case of sequence diagram it represents only the behavioral aspect but in case of collaboration diagram it represents both structural as well as behavioral aspects so now we know how to represent the behavioral aspects it is by drawing the lines and objects and how they are passing message etc but how to represent the structural aspect to represent structural aspect we will be uh, drawing the objects and links among them indicating the association that means we will be uh, writing the multiplicity or the type of association between them etc so in collaboration diagram each object is also called a collaborator okay now how when we draw the link between objects we have to draw a solid line and the same line can be used to indicate the message that is being passed between them okay so that if the message is passed if the link also includes or indicates a message we have to write the message what kind of message or what's a message being passed just above the line or the link between the object okay and also in the case of collaboration diagram uh, it's not like from top to bottom so we in order to know the order in which the messaging took place we have to write the message numbers along with the messages message label in the case of sequence diagrams we know that the messaging took place from top to bottom 
the topmost message is the first message then comes the second then third like well, like that we know that but in the case of collaboration diagram we won't be able to identify the order in which the messaging took place so in order to indicate that in order to identify the order in which the messaging took place we have to use the message numbers that means each message will be prefixed by sequence numbers like one two three so that we will be getting an order in which the messaging took place okay we will see one example then it will be more clear to you so this is an example of the same example the collaboration diagram of the same sequence diagram that we have seen before but see here as you can see the the link between the objects it is by a solid line we are not using any arrow marks we are using the sequence numbers here see the first sequence number one this means this is the first message so here we cannot say that we have to read from top to bottom because here here we if we try to read from top to bottom the first message will be find that is not the first message that is not the way to read this so in order to get an order of the messages that took place as the interaction took place we will be appending or we will be prefixing the sequence number with each message like one two three so as you can see this is the first message that is renew book and it took place between this object and this object and the direction is from this from library boundary to library book renewal controller and second message is between this object and this object direction is towards the library member and this is the message that is being transferred so like that in order to indicate the sequence of messages we have to use the sequence number we have to prefix the sequence number along with each message so this is the collaboration diagram of the same sequence diagram that we have seen just now we shall conclude now so in this video lecture we came across something known as the interaction diagram what do we mean by interaction diagram what are the different types of interaction diagrams and we saw an example of each sequence diagram and collaboration diagrams okay i hope all of you have understood thank you so much